Three reasons Martin Van Buren is still important. Poor Martin Van Buren is commonly remembered as a one-term president who earned the nickname Martin Van Ruin. But our man Martin is a secretly important ingredient to our great American story. Number one, Van Buren's many firsts. In our day and age, when we celebrate the breaking of barriers, Martin Van Buren's trailblazing deserves a little more attention. Van Buren was the first president who was not ethnically English. In other words, he had no English ancestry. Van Buren's family was Dutch in origin, immigrating to the colony of New Netherland generations before, later taken over by the English. What makes this fact more significant is that even after Van Buren, nearly every president since then had at least some English ancestry. And if we widen the scope to include Scottish and Irish ancestors, Van Buren again stands alone as the sole outlier. Which segues to another first and only. Van Buren is the only president whose first language was not English. Van Buren's first language was Dutch. Born in Kinderhook, New York in 1782, the first president not born a British subject, Van Buren's hometown fell into what George Washington deemed the Dutch Belt, running through New York and New Jersey, where the Dutch-speaking descendants of immigrants to New Netherlands still thrived, and native speakers of Dutch actually outnumbered those present over 100 years before when the English took over. On that note, Van Buren is the first president from New York State, but on to more important things. Number two, Martin Van Buren, while still a politician in New York, organized from a vague system of alliances, something called the Albany Regency, one of the very first political machines in our nation. Once in DC, he used the same organizational zeal to overcome the geographical factionalism of the country and the ill-defined and much divided Democratic Republican Party to help create a new party called the Democratic Party around the public persona of one Andrew Jackson. Number three, after leaving the Democratic Party, he reorganized much of the fledgling Liberty Party, again using his political wizardry and created the Free Soil Party, dedicated to stopping the expansion of slavery into new territories, hence Free Soil. He even ran for president again in 1848 under the Free Soil Party banner, enlisting Charles Adams, son of John Quincy Adams, as his running mate. Together as a third party, they captured over 10% of the popular vote, pushing the anti-slavery cause to new political heights. Van Buren ran knowing he would not win, but believed he was laying the groundwork for greater things. And he was right, but not exactly in the way he expected. Van Buren lost interest in the Free Soiler sometime around 1852. And without him, the party began sliding into obscurity until the Free Soilers combined with other factions in 1854, becoming the Republican Party, absorbing the Free Soil policy of containment on the issue of slavery. So in addition to his many firsts, Van Buren is a founding father of the Democratic Party, a founding grandfather or at least forerunner of the Republican Party, reflecting his understanding of national politics over sectionalism. For better or worse, Martin Van Buren, the sly fox from Kinderhook, created the political systems still in use today. And while we could admit he wasn't the best president, nor is he a modern man by any sense of the word, he's still important today.